Here's how I make painted platters from start to finish. I begin with a sheet of clay and I lay it down onto an embossing plate I've created and then roll the clay into the plate. Once the clay is well seated, then I can decorate the other side. This is a great way to get texture on both sides of the clay. Now I can lift the slab up and you can see it's amazing how much detail the clay will hold. Now these are some sticks that I cut up and I love them because you can, it's a real simple mold. You can make them into any size of rectangle or square and determine the amount of lip the platter has. And this is a piece of cloth called Interface and you can get it at a fabric store. It's very cheap. I like it because it's not woven. So as I press it into the clay, it doesn't leave any texture. These are some small sticks I've also created, and they are gonna support the edge of the rim so that I can then press into the clay and give the rim a concave shape. I cut these little templates out of just some thick paper which is, allows me to use the very same pattern in the cut room. This X-Acto knife is very dull. Do not try this with a sharp one. I've had it for about 30 years, but I like it because the blade itself is very thin, so it goes through the clay quite easily. I'm gonna finish up the edge, and then I'll roll a thin coil cut small pieces that are all the same size and give it some texture and then I'm going to add it to the rim just to give the rim a little more, more detail. When the clay is set up I can remove those sticks. This piece of foam and cardboard box is so I can flip the platter over while I support the floor of the pot and then I'll roll a coil that will become the foot. Make it nice and even, it's very long. Score it and slip it. And for slip, I just use water. I use a lot of compression and so water is plenty good. And then I'll compress that coil onto the platter using a chamois so my fingers will glide and I'll refine the shape of the foot and then use a wooden tool to clean up the inside seam and a different tool to clean up the outside seam. Flip it over once more and then you'll see the platter is finished. It will dry and be bisque fired and then the next step is to paint the surface with a black slip and wipe it away so it gets caught in all the edges. Here I'm using a red iron oxide wash for the centers of the flowers and then a glaze for the stamen. After that, I'll cover what I just painted in wax resist to protect the surface. Then I can paint the petals in the dark cobalt glaze. The final step is to put the whole thing through a glaze bath. And you can see where the wax, wax resist is. That's it. That's what it looks like after it's been fired. I hope this gave you some ideas and perhaps some new tools and techniques to play with. Enjoy!